So, if we talk about how does a plane look like? So, in case of plane, we can see any surface like this. Something like this. So, this is a plane in 3D. This is passing through some points. Well, but this is a plane. So a plane is like a rectangular sheet and a line is just like a straight line, which can be extended Sir? to both ends. Now, yes. Uh, this year plane is cancelled. Oh, uh, from board, CBC boards? Yes, sir. In that case, we will have just line. So that would make the task much easier. And if you talk about line, so what are the important factors about line? Now, if a line is passing through a 3D plane, then it must be meeting somewhere with x-axis, somewhere with y-axis, and somewhere with z-axis. Okay. So we want to find out. And if it's not even meeting with them, then in that case, we can find out the angle with that axis by taking a parallel line towards the axis. Right? So we will try to find out the angles, angles made by line with x axis, y axis, and z axis. Right? And those angles will be denoted as alpha, beta, and gamma. And similarly, we will try to find out direction cosines, DCs of the line. Now, before DCs, I want you to understand uh, another important term, which is direction ratios. So we have previously talked about direction ratios though. Uh, let's take a vector A, which is I plus 2J minus 3K, right? So can you tell me the direction ratios DRs of A? 1, 2, and 3, minus 3. Yeah, 1, 2, and minus 3, right? And, you know, uh, if you talk about, let's say, DCs of this A, which are L, M, and N, they must have some value. Can you find, find out element N? A by root of A square plus B square plus C square, M Correct. is equal to B by root, and N is equal to C by root of. Yeah, so we, we have this relation. So what is this L, M, and N? And let's talk about this. Let's take them as A1, B1, or A1, A2, and A3. Let's take them anything. Generally, we denote them as A, B, and C. These are DRs. And these are DCs. Right? So L by A is equals to M by B is equals to N by C. So you can interpret it like DCs and DRs are always proportional. Or you can all also interpret it like your vector can be written in the form of DCs. Because this A, B, and C can be calculated with the help of DCs. Right. So let's take this as K. Right. Let's take this ratio as K. So from here, you can take L by A is equals to K. Hence, you have this L as AK. You can take M as BK. And you can take N as CK. Now you know one identity. that L square plus M square plus N square is equals to one, right? Sum of squares of DCs is equal to one. So if you put that, it becomes A square K square plus B square K square plus C square K square is equals to one. From which, you can take k square common 
and it becomes 1 by a square plus b square plus c square. And the value of k becomes plus minus 1 divided by a square plus b square plus c square. And that is how we got this relation. That is how we got this relation that L is equals to AK. Now, if you multiply L is equals to AK, you will get A upon root over A square plus B square plus C square. And value of M as B upon B square plus A, A square plus B square plus C square. And similarly, proceed. But let's understand what does that plus minus mean? Can you tell me what does that plus minus mean? If, I mean, what do you understand what plus minus? Direction. Yeah, right, direction. Now see, we, we have talked about this, that line can be extended towards both ends. So line has two directions to, I mean, walk towards. Uh, so line can be moved either, I mean, in the same direction, but either towards this same or towards its opposite same. Okay, so that is what plus and minus suggest here. And K can be taken, I mean, plus or minus can be taken out, uh, can be taken as according given to the question. So you can see that. But there are two DCs which exist for a line. Right? Now you have to understand which you have to take. Okay, so the first important thing is DRs and DCs of a line, right? And DRs and DCs of a line can be you know, interpreted as L, M, and N, A, B, and C. So, Okay, so let's understand one more thing. So let's say if if we know two points, <clears throat> if we know two points through which the line is passing. So let's say this point is A, and this is x1, y1, z1, and let's go to some other point B, and this is x2, y2, and z. Okay. Also, guys, you have to understand that what is the value of L and N here. So, L is obviously cos alpha, M is equals to cos beta, and N is equals to cos gamma. Right, so we have these two points. Now we want to find out the DRs or DCs of this line. Okay. <clears throat> so DRs of the line would be same. I mean, DRs, what's, what's the job of DR or DC? To give you the direction, right? So whatever the direction of this line segment would be, that direction would be valid for line for as line, I mean, line for. So this AB can give me the direction ratios. Now DRs would be, so this is DRs using two points. So let's say we have know these two points AB, then DRs, and let's call this line as L. DRs of L 
can be x1 minus x2, y1 minus y2, z1 minus z2, or x2 minus x1, y2 minus y1, z2 minus z2. Similarly, if you talk about DCs, then you will have to take, let's say, your, oh, let's call this line as not L, let's call this line as T. So let's say you want to find out the value of L, that is cos alpha. So that would be x1 minus x2 divided by root over x1 minus x2 whole square plus y1 minus y2 whole square plus z1 minus z2 whole square. Right? Did you guys get it? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Cool. Now don't don't get confused about plus minus. Uh, we'll get that. Okay. <clears throat> You can take either. Okay. So let's solve exercise one. Uh, solve question number second. 11.1, page 467. Can I remove this? Yes, sir. Page 467. Question number two. Size one. Question number two. Find the direction cosine of a line which makes equal angles with the coordinate axis. So if the line is making equal angle, what should angle be? Okay, do we know what, what, what is that angle? No, right? So let's take the angle as alpha. So every angle would be alpha, right? Whatever the angle with x-axis is, that is alpha. Whatever the angle with y-axis is, that is alpha. And whatever the angle with z-axis is, that is also alpha. In that case, cos square alpha plus cos square alpha plus cos square alpha is equals to one, no? is the sum of squares of DC is equal to 1. And in that case, we can find out the value for cos alpha. So, the correction cosines, what's the value? Cos inverse pi by three, pi by six. Um, isn't it cos inverse plus minus one by three? Oh yes, sir. Um, three cos square alpha is equal to one, no? Um, cos square alpha would be one by three. So cos alpha would be plus minus one by root. So there we, we got so DC as plus minus one by root three, comma plus minus one by root three, comma plus minus one by root three. 
So either the set can be 1 by root 3, 1 by root 3, 1 by root 3, or minus 1 by root 3, minus 1 by root 3, minus 1 by root 3. Is all fourth. <clears throat> How do you solve fourth? Please discuss whatever strategy or plans you have. We are given three points in space, right? 3D, A, B, and C. We need to prove that these three are collinear. We can take uh, any two coordinates and find the DRs of two. And okay. if one of them is a multiple of the other, then it, they're collinear. Got it. If TRs are proportional, in that case, they should be parallel. But one point is common. And that is why they, has, they are to be linear. Right? Okay, so check that. Just check that and tell me the value of TRs. What would be the DR of, uh, let's call it AB. First point is A, second is B. This is what would be the DR of AB. Minus 3, minus 5, and minus 3. Correct. So, uh, what would be the DRs of BC? 6, 10, and minus X. 6, 10, and 6. Okay. Negative 6, minus Uh, one minute should be six now. Huh? Last point is five eight seven. So it should be PC should be six, right? Yes, sir. Plus six. Yeah. So they are calling minus three, minus five, and minus three, and then we got six, ten, and six. So let's solve fifth one, fifth one, fifty one. Uh, let's call the first point as A and second point as B. So you just tell me the DCs of AB. Okay. AB. Minus four, four, minus four and six. Uh, minus four, minus four and six. These are the DR, sorry. Yeah, so we need to get the DCs.
DCs are uh, L is minus 2 by root 17, M is minus 2 by root 17, N is 3 by root 17. So now this was the basic information about a line. So you can have either the DRs or DCs of a line. Uh, how a line would look like? The equation you saw, like if you write a vector as I cap plus J cap plus K cap, that is a line segment, not a line. First question is, how do you structure a line? Now, before structuring the line, I would rather say, before structuring to the line, I would rather say, what are the important factors? What are the factors on which this, this line is based on? What do I need to know before I get to the equation of the line? Right? So we need to know two things. If we are talking about the equation of a line in space, we should know the direction. We should know the direction of the line. And we should know a point. We should know a point. through which the line is passing. So it can happen in two ways. Either first, we have a point, a point through which line is passing. And so it will be passes through a given point and has given direction. So direction would be given to you and a point would be given to you through which the line is passing. Or it can also happen if, let's say, we are not giving you one point and direction this time, but we are giving you Give me two points, I can find out the direction ratios, DRs, right? And also I have a point, in fact, two points through which the line is passing. Now, <clears throat> let's talk about how can we write the equation of a line. So, if we talk about the first part, so let's come to the first part now. Um, passing through a given point and has given direction. So, let's say we have this line, just showing the line. And everything, everything in space will work, work out in two modes. Either it can be done in vector mode, okay, and or it can be done in Cartesian mode. So vector mode is when we are just talking about in terms of vector. Okay, and we don't have exact coordinates, so we are not talking about anything. Like that. We are just talking about in terms of vector. Okay, and Cartesian form is when we have coordinates. For every term, and we are talking, we, we are, we are, we are, our perspective is geometry, right? So, coordinate geometry, more like coordinate geometry, right? So, uh, when a line is passing through a given point and has given direction, what does that mean? Is first of all, a point would be given to you. Let's call that point as a vector, okay? We call that point as a vector, and that can be x1 y1, z1. 
So I'll try to simplify this for you. I'll write the coordinates as well as vector. Right. So we'll cover the cover both of the forms, right? Uh, some simultaneously. Just a minute. Uh, sorry. So we can work both the approach simultaneously. Uh, let's say let's call this vector as A, and let's I mean let's call this point as A vector, right? And we have the position of A as x1, y1, z1, right? And we also have the direction ratios. We also have the direction ratios. So I'm denoting it like an arrow, and let's call the direction ratios as uh, so. Let's call this vector as B vector. And let's say these are A, B, and C. We use these notation as the standard notation. So this B vector is signifying the direction ratios or DRs. And this A vector is giving you the position of the point through which the line is passing. Now you want to define this line. Now, how do you say a point is lying on this line? Let's say this is a general point. Take any point and this is a general point. This is R. Let's say R has coordinates as X, Y, Z. So what is the condition that R lies on this line? Now, that should be that if you take the DRs of R with A, you know this point is lying on the line. Now, if R is also lying in this line, I mean, R is also lying on the line. In that case, the DRs of R and A, DRs of R and A should be proportional with B. We have already, you already have the DRs of the line. Now, you also know a point which is lying on the line. Now, if you're talking about a general point on the line, DRs of that point with A should be proportional with B, DRs of the line. So this gives a very simple explanation that R minus A vector is equals to lambda times, this lambda is the ratio or proportionality constant, right, with B. So the vector form is written as R vector is equals to A plus lambda B vector this is vector form now if you talk about Cartesian form this can be converted directly with vector form so R vector is what x i cap plus y j cap plus z k cap right? and Let's work out what is it? So R vector is we have all these vectors. R is X I cap plus Y J cap plus Z K cap minus A is X1 I cap minus y1 j cap minus z1 k cap is equals to lambda times b vector is a i cap plus b j cap plus c k cap right so this can be written as 
x minus x1 i cap plus y minus y1 j cap plus z minus z1 with k cap is equals to lambda a i cap plus lambda b j cap plus lambda c k cap which means that x minus x1 should be equals to lambda a. y minus y1 should be equals to lambda b due to equality of these two vectors right we can say that i component is equal to i component and all the corresponding components should be equal so z minus z1 is equals to lambda c from here you can write that x minus x1 is upon a <clears throat> is equals to lambda. Similarly, observe from second, y minus y1 is upon b is, equal, is also equal to lambda. And z minus z1 upon c is also equal to lambda. So lambda is actually equal to both of them. I mean, all of them. This would be y minus y1 upon b is equals to z minus z1 upon c is equals to lambda. This is the equation of line in Cartesian form. When a point and the direction of the vector, direction of the line is given to you. But if two points are given, then also similarly, we have to follow the similar approach. In place of B, we will have to find out the DRs that you can find out using the two points. Let's call that point as B now. So in that case, these DRs will be B minus A. Move forward. Yes, sir. So, second one is when it passes through two points. Let's say you are given two points. Let's call this point as A and this point as B. Let's call the coordinates as x1, y1, z1. And B as x2, y2, z. <clears throat> so in that case also, similar approach that any point let's call the, this any point as r and the coordinate is x y and z so in that case r minus a you can say r minus a or r minus b both because r minus a is the dr represents the same dr as r minus b so r minus a or r minus b should be Lambda times A minus B or B minus A. You can use anything. A minus B or B minus A. And similarly, lambda times A minus B. Because A minus B is fixed or B minus A is fixed. These two points are already on the line. So whatever DRs, fixed DRs, which is represented by A minus B or B minus A, you have for the line that should be that should be the drs of any point r on this line with a or b okay. now you can work them out i mean you don't need to solve them right you can also write this expression as 
I mean differently, but we don't need to solve that much. So you can simply write R as A plus lambda times A minus B or R as B plus lambda times A minus B. Both will be similar. Face the variable of different vector or different length. So R is either B vector plus lambda times A minus B or We can also use B. This lambda times A minus B or B minus in general. So can you work out the Cartesian form now? Tell me the final expression just as we expressed in the last question. And it is very similar to the last question. So x minus x1 divided by x2 minus x1 is equal to y minus y1 divided by y2 minus y1 is equal to z right. minus z1 divided by z2 minus z1. Correct. So basically, your dr should change to x2 minus x1, y2 minus y1, and z2 minus z1. And you can use either of the points, either x1, y1, z1, or x2, y2, z2 in the new meter. Right? <clears throat> so it's a very simple change. Now, okay. So, also, we need to talk about skew lines as well. Um, let me check the answer. Yeah, also, you can use DCs of the line for, for writing the equation. Okay. I mean, rather than A, B, and C in the first part, rather than A, B, and C, if given L, M, and N, the equation will be C. Okay. Uh, have you written the Cartesian form? X minus X1 divided by X2 minus X1. Right? Yes, sir. Correct. Okay. So, let's talk about one more concept now. So, let's say we have these two ones. We're making some angle theta with each other. So let's call this line as L1 and let's call this line as L2. So theta is the angle between L1 and L2. Right. Now we need to find out the angle theta. <clears throat> 
So how can we do so? Now, we have the direction of L1. We also have the direction for L2. And we know how to find out the angle between two lines L1. Or angle between two vectors, A dot B. Right? A dot B was mod A mod B cos theta. So if we have A and B, right? Let's call them A and B for now. If we have the DRs, so this is angle between two lines. Angle between two lines. So if this vector is A and this is B vector, right? then angle would be defined as cos theta, which would be A dot B divided by mod A mod. Right. So let's say in this in, in the cut Cartesian form of equation. Cartesian equation of these two lines, L1 and L2 is x minus x1 divided by a1 is equal to y minus y1 divided by b1 is equal to z minus z1 divided by c1. And this is L2, which is divided by C2. Okay. In that case, this cos theta can be presented as, so these are the DRs, A1, B1, C1 for line 1, and these, these are A2, B2, C2 for line 2. So this would be A1, B1, sorry, A1, A2, plus B1, B2, plus C1, C2, divided by root over a1 square plus b1 square plus c1 square and divided by the mod of second which is a2 square plus b2 square plus c1 square. Hmm. This is how we can calculate the angle between two lines. Now, can you find out <clears throat> uh, when the two lines are perpendicular? When the two lines are perpendicular, is there a condition you can tell? Whether or not these two lines are parallel. Parallel or perpendicular. When it is perpendicular, theta will be 90, so it will be 0. Correct. And if if a fraction is equals to 0, in that case, the numerator has to be 0. The numerator of the fraction should be 0. So A1, A2 plus B1, B2 plus C1, C2 has to be 0. So if two lines are perpendicular, in that case, A1, A2 plus B1, B2 plus C1, C2 is equals to 0. And this is one right i mean f theta is zero basically the lines are parallel or collinear so in that case theta would be zero or zero would be one so that would only happen that would only happen if a1 by a2 is equal to b1 by b2 is equal to c1 by c2 so basically both of these drs has to be proportional if 
I mean, let's say the TRS of line one is two, three, and four. And second one is four, six, and eight. In that case, these two are proportional. So they have to be parallel. Mm -hmm. So that is the So we can write these two conditions as first is if two lines are perpendicular, that is it is equals to 90 degree. It implies that A1, A2 plus B1, B2 plus C1, C2 is equals to C. And second one is the two lines are parallel. If two lines are parallel, that is theta is equals to zero degree. It implies that a one by a two is equals to b one by b two is equals to c one by c two. So now we only have the last topic as distance. Uh, I mean, this last topic consists actually two, three topics. Distance, this is uh, topic is related to distance. Either it can be between two lines, distance between two lines, or it can be from distance from a point, distance from a point to a line, right? So we can talk about two things here. Okay. Now, I don't see Fatima right now. So I, I think we'll cover this one. Uh, and we have a class on Thursday for one hour only. At the same time. Is it possible for you guys? So we do have an exam on Friday, so. Okay. So is it possible on Friday or Saturday? Saturday is the regular class actually. So if it's possible on Friday, we can cover Promote slaves on Friday only. And you can come for the doubts on Saturday and Sunday. Or, or if not, then we can cover it in the regular class in Saturday. So just inform me in case 